this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. Welcome everyone. You can be seated. Now it's good that you're all here today. Now, Stephen and Brittany chose to have you all come to participate. Participate. You know, there's a part of this marriage that you will participate in on behalf of Stephen and Brittany. I say thank you all for coming. We, with the help of God, are supporters of this union. Stephen and Brittany are going to lean on you, depend on you for support and guidance. As witnesses to this union today, you are committing to this couple that you will support and encourage them through the rough waters of life. Later on, we plan on Stephen and Brittany to say their I do's. But before this happens, do you, as witnesses of this union, promise to support Stephen and Brittany through the, their journey in marriage and life together? Yeah, I, do. I had uh, Stephen and Brittany do several assignments as preparation for the marriage ahead. The last one was to write an essay paper on uh, what were their expectations of marriage, what caused them to decide to marry, and a special moment or a cute story. Stephen said that he seemed to have fallen in love repeatedly. You know, God gives blessing after blessing to each and to reach our lives with his touch. And one of them is love. When it hits, it's so often overwhelming that we can't stay in that moment. But it leaves an internal imprint. On a particular night, roasting hot dogs and marshmallows over the fire was one of those touches that verified again how much that love overflowed as Brittany, Heidi, and he sat in awe of the experience of each other as all their faces reflected the firelight. You know, it wasn't so much the proof of love, but a signal to pursue love and a deposit for a promised fulfillment of true love from God himself. It was enough for Stephen to commit to a lifelong pursuit of marriage and a courageous will to prove, prove love through the fear, through the trials, and even through possible betrayals if necessary. Stephen doesn't expect everything will be great, grandiose, but their friendship remains. That their friendship remains, and that this happiness, his happiness, will be in response to Brittany's happiness. 
Marriage is a picture of Christ and the church. Stephen, you didn't say outright that you want to lead and work on presenting Brittany pure and blameless before God. But that is what you're committing to today by taking her as your wife. In Ephesians 5:25, it says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church. Now, when I look at the present church, I don't see a perfect bride just yet. Peter described the woman as a weaker vessel. In Revelations, the bride is finally, finally beautifully dressed and prepared for her husband. Now, that's over 2,000 years of preparing his bride. Now, this is what this wedding is a reflection of. Stephen, though on this day it's easy to see this pure reflection of Christ and the church, you must try to hold that view tomorrow and the next day and the next week and the next month and the next year and the next decade and if God lets you live into the next century. God is faithful, and he that began a good work in you both will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Brittany chimed in about her expectations. You know, I know that our marriage won't always be constant smooth sailing, but I expect to calm the waters together and make our bond even stronger. You know, as we learn from the rocky times, I expect us to love God and each other forever as we expand our lives together. Brittany's special moment was at the zoo. I guess uh, Heidi says, we go to the zoo, we go to the zoo, right? You know, as Brittany pondered about how she thought, she blew every opportunity to ever experience love from a man, let alone one with blonde eyes, blue hair, a sense of humor, and possibly a tattoo or two, uh, and, and one that loves Heidi. At the zoo was where she saw God's grace in the wonderful, wonderful surprise of love. There she said that I had found my forever place in his heart. And he had found his forever place in our hearts. Stephen and Brittany aren't perfect. The church isn't perfect. As a bride of Christ, I'm sure glad God didn't stop his love or his pursuit to enter into the eternal marriage covenant with us. As believers, he purchased us with his blood while we were still his, his enemies. And it is his continual cleansing that keeps us holy and pure. You know, the greatest love story of mortals in the Bible isn't the Song of Solomon. But Hosea, as he is directed by God, commanded by God to, to marry unfaithful Gomer. And then pursue her after she continues to be unfaithful as a demonstration of God's love for unfaithful us. You know, the greatest love story ever is God's pursuit of us. You know, really love is not what we expect to get out of it, but what we invest into it. It is an emptying of oneself and into others, not expecting in return. And, and this, is, this is what the Bible says love is. In 1 Corinthians 13, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I'm nothing. If I give all I have and all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. 
It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And I believe God brought you both together to give you a taste of His love that waits for you. You know, so many times we put off the greatest relationship ever because we expect to be fulfilled with just a foretaste or a, a shadow of it in, in, in marriage or relationships out here on earth. But they're just a foretaste. They're just, they're just like a receipt. One day, they will blow away. But as we taste, as we see this picture of His love for us, may we look beyond that in the eternal context of Jesus and God's love for us. You know, just like the overflowing feeling that the campfire and the zoo was a fulfilling, yet a fleeting glimpse into the lifelong love you two will have together and that you're pursuing. This marriage is but a glimpse and a fleeting picture of God's love for you that will last forever. You know, God uses marriage to describe His love for the church. As you, Stephen, and Brittany vow together, may your lives be this reflection of God's love. Don't limit your lives to the reflection of just each other's love. Marriage was not designed to fulfill all your desires. The reality is Christ. Ephesians 5, 31. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. The two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery. But I'm talking about Christ and the church. You know, the Bible calls you earlier in this passage to submit to one another. For you, Brittany, submitting is much, your submitting is done much like the church submits to Christ. The church loves Christ because he first loved you. For Stephen, you must submit to Brittany as Christ submitted to the church and gave himself up for her. You're to be the instigator of love. You must do your best to reflect the true love of God to the weaker vessel. You must be the spiritual leader that blazes the trail through the trials of life. You know, Stephen, this task will be impossible without God's help. You know, God brought you two together and without expecting it, He blew you away with how wonderful you are for each other. As kind of a peek into what is ahead. You know, even as we look at the support out there, I know they aren't perfect either. But God from whom that love flows is perfect. God's not done with unwrapping that joy for you and your journey together with Him. You know, as you grow closer to Him, you will grow, grow closer to each other. It's, it's a perfect love triangle. Okay? I love one of Paul's prayers out of Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. And at this time, we will pray that the strength and drive of this marriage is supernatural. Let's pray. For this reason, I kneel in the presence of the Father from whom all the family in heaven and on earth receives its name. I'm asking God to give you a gift from the wealth of His glory. I pray that He would give you inner strength and power through His Spirit. Then Christ will live in you through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground into which you sink your roots and on which you have your foundation. This way, with all of God's people, you will be able to understand how wide, long, high, and deep His love is. You will know Christ's love, which goes far beyond any knowledge. I pray this so that you may be completely filled with God. Glory belongs to God, whose power is at work in us. By this power, He can do infinitely more than what we can ask or imagine. Glory belongs to God in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time and eternity. Amen. Amen. Stephen, I, I believe you've... You will... Okay. Stephen, <laughs> will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's holy estate of marriage? 
Will you love her, comfort her, honor her, and keep her in sickness and in health? And keep her only for, keep yourself only for her as long as you both shall live. I do. Brittany, will you have this man to be your wedded husband? To live together after God's holy estate of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor him, and keep him in sickness and in health? And keep yourself only for him as long as you both shall live. I do. I believe you've chosen rings as tokens of your marriage promises. Rings are symbols as they represent the precious ties that unite husband and wife. They symbolize the unbroken partnership of marriage until broken by death. Let these be constant reminders of your obligations to each other. Stephen, as you place the ring on Brittany's finger, will you repeat after me? I, Stephen, take you, Brittany. I, Stephen, take you, Brittany. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and cherish. To love and cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. I pledge myself to you. I pledge myself to you. In the presence of God and these witnesses. In the presence of God and these witnesses. Brittany, as you place the ring on Stephen's finger, will you repeat after me? I, Brittany, take you, Stephen. I, Brittany, take you, Stephen. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and cherish. To love and cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. I pledge myself to you and I pledge myself to you. I pledge myself to you. In the presence of God and these witnesses. In the presence of God and these witnesses. As a minister of God, I challenge you both to associate with believers in Jesus who should always pray for and support your family. Always give 100% of yourselves to each other so that your marriage will become truly a selfish, selfless relationship. I challenge you both to meet God and daily through the reading of the Bible and prayer that you may realize the abundant life and the peace that God offers those that seek Him. You know, for as much as Stephen and Brittany have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God and you and have given and pledged their lives in the sight of us all, I now pronounce them husband and wife. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Stephen, you may kiss the bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you Stephen and Brittany Wiswell.